Draymond Green. Mr. Draymond Green, welcome to The Daily Show. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Are you kidding? I'm shocked that you have time to do anything <laughs> after winning your fourth NBA championship. Does it ever get old? You, you know, this one feels different than any other one. In this, what way? It's like the ultimate <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. I, let's, let's talk about it. Let's jump straight into it. This is what I love about you, you know? Th 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 there was an era in sports where you know, people would sort of say what they mean on the court. But then when they would come off the court, they'd do an interview, what do you think about this? Be like, oh, it was a good game. Oh, it was a fun game. Draymond Green says what he feels. Draymond Green says what he means. The fans love you because of this. I love watching the post-game interviews because of you. Thank so you. Let's, let's talk about that, that aspect of the game. You've been honest about it from the beginning. People wrote your team off. People said Golden State was done for. Does this feel like, like, like vindication in the biggest way? It does. I felt like people doubted us more this time than they did prior to 2015 when we had never won anything. And mm -hmm. I think that's ultimately, you know, everybody's like, oh, why, why, why in the parade are y'all saying F everybody and shut up? And that's because the reality is they, they disrespected the work we've already done. Right. You know, they, to disrespect us as if we aren't champions and just write us off like we hadn't done it before, that's why I said F them. <laughs> <laughs> Simple. Can I tell you what I also like? I, this is what I like. There's, there's, a, there's an element of... of of danger that's been infused into the team. Because I think you know this. The Golden State Warriors are an amazing team. But you guys have like a bit of a like like a like a Christian youth group vibe about you. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> no, I mean especially like Clay and Steph and like you're the bad boy of the group, but like Clay and Steph, it's very much like I'll see you guys on Sunday. It's like a nice thing. <laughs> and I think there was this attitude in the league where people were like, oh, man, they're the nice guys. You can say anything about them, they won't do anything. I saw you in one of the post post-match interviews where you said they said, What do you think happened? You said, I thought I was too soft in that game. You changed everything after that. How do you maintain being good players, being good people, but still bringing enough hardness to the game while playing, while still playing clean? Well, I think ultimately uh, you, you follow your leader, uh -huh. and so when you call us a, a, a youth church group, that's Steph Curry to the T. Like, <laughs> like that's who he is. He may as well go run the ministry. <laughs> but now, Clay, I think everybody kind of has misunder Clay misunderstood. Yeah, in what way? Clay's a little wild. Like, okay. Clay go off the rail a little bit. Is this pre-injury Clay or post-injury? Has he changed uh, since He's injury? a little more tame after the injury. Oh, wow. Yeah, he was okay. wilder before the injury. Okay. But I think, you know, um, there's kind of this misconception of no to take this as disrespect. Yeah, yeah, no. As like light-skinned guys. Like, oh, you know. oh, that's that's funny that you no, said that to me. No, no disrespect. No disrespect. Like like, now don't don't get hurt, Trevor. <laughs> you like you don't light-skinned guys are really something like I won't quit Draymond. You get that out of me on my show. No, but there's like this misconception oh, okay. of of, of light-skinned guys being soft. Huh. And I always. But, but like you just said, I am soft, I by said, the way. But yeah, but. No, but like you just said, I was the soft one. Like we saw game one, Steph Curry was great. Yes, like, yes. I was the soft one. So I think you know it's, it may be time to change the misconception. Okay, okay. You you got you got four championships. You know, it feels like each championship has a story. You know, the first time is who is this team? What are they doing? Steve Kerr. This this whole mix. I would argue that your team has almost reshaped basketball. You know, the Thank way you. teams play, the way you move the ball, where people shoot from, how you defend, all of that has changed because of Golden State. Absolutely. Like, w when you look at your fourth championship, how do you motivate yourself to do even more now? Because most would go, I've won. What, what else do I have to push myself on? Well, LeBron has four, and if, if I get five, I'm the greatest ever, right? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> no, but honestly, like, like that's the challenge. Like, can you do it again? Like, yeah. the moment we finish, I'm standing up on a podium, and I'm like, this, this is crazy. Like, it's wild. How do we get back here? I like you know, that. It's, it's, it's feeling, like, my biggest fear when we won the first one was that this feeling is so great, I'll never feel this again in my life. Wow. And so you're just chasing that feeling again. And, and quite frankly, like I said before the season, nobody has proven that they can beat us. It's mm. still happening. Mm. So you're going into another season. The team is looking good. The spirit, in, just in the city, like if you're in Oakland, you know, even around San Francisco, you can feel there's a pride in and around the team. I, I feel a change in you as well in that, 
You know, th there were some moments where it felt, it felt like Draymond Green was angry. You know, people weren't giving you the respect that you deserved. Now it seems like you play with the anger, but you have like a you have like a different swag to you as a person now. You 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 laugh at at at, at people's doubts. You know, you you enjoy those moments on your podcast, for instance. You 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 put it all out there. What do you think changed in your life? I think a um, having a fiance that I have, uh, she's incredible. She's changed me. And I love that. Thank you. And, and, and also, my children, um, they've changed me. And, 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 like, my mom constantly reminds me, hey, the baby's watching you. Like, make sure oh, you're I on like your that. best behavior. The babies are watching you. And so I think that's changed me, and, and it's helped me channel it a lot. Now, another thing that's helped me is when you have that fire and that chip as a second-round pick, mm -hmm. everybody loves it. It's great. But when you carry that same chip as a four-time All-Star, as a four-time champion, it's then distasteful because you're not the underdog anymore. That's interesting. And so what I realized was that <clears throat> I was carrying that same chip that allowed me to remember the 34 guys that was drafted before me in the year five and six. And people are starting to look at it like, man, that's, that's nasty, that's distasteful. And I knew that I wanted to change that. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. want the perception of me to be a, a bad taste in someone's mind. I hear what you're saying. You weren't trying to be the villain. You were just trying to be somebody who's driven and it changes w with your position of power. I, I, I hear you. Before I let you go, there's one thing I've, I've always wanted to know about that element of the game with the players and the teams and, and, and the fans and all of that is you have this camaraderie. You guys have this drive. You, 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 you have this, this world that we don't know about as the fans. And when the fans are cussing you guys out from the sides, <laughs> on the one hand, fans are there to throw you off your game. Mm -hmm. They want to say whatever to, to get at you, and that's part of being there live. On the other hand, you're human beings. You have families. You know, you, you, you have emotions. How, how do you think we find that balance between what fans can say at a game and, and what you should or shouldn't respond to as an athlete? Well, I used to feel like fans should be stopped from saying some of the things that they say. Uh-huh. <clears throat> then Commissioner Silver comes out and says, hey, man, those Boston fans are great. As they're saying, you, Draymond. So I'm like, all right, commissioner's the best commissioner. And like I said on my tweet, he's probably the, one of the best CEOs mm -hmm. in America, let alone commissioner of a sports league. But he's like, oh, that's great. So my response to that is great, cool. Can I turn and yell <laughs> them? Because, <laughs> because if, I, if I can, then no problem. Let them yell what they want to okay. yell. I yell what I want right. to yell, and I continue down the court. And so I think the thing for me is like, some, at, at some point, you're kind of allowing them to do this and, yes. and encouraging it in a way because they know if I yell that to Draymond and he says that back to me, he's getting fined $25,000. Mm. He's getting fined $50,000. So what I'll say to commissioners, no problem. That was fun. Let them do their thing. But let me do my thing and don't hit my pocketbook. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man, I could talk to you forever. But that's what the podcast is for. <laughs> Be sure to check out his podcast, The Draymond Green Show, and the sessions. Draymond Green is now available on Prime Video.